Hello, in this video I'll be going over the basic concepts of battle as it comes to conquests and fighting in group battles. I would like to apologize for the poor quality of the video and, and audio, I guess. And I would like to apologize to my friend Upgrade for not properly recording our video. Upgrade had come over the other day and we hashed out everything I'm about to disclose in this video. Unfortunately, I forgot to set the mic input and all the recordings of our work were muted and essentially worthless. What you will see is a more concise video, however, and of uh, what we had come up with together and then the best way to handle these situations that I'm going to discuss. I would also like to thank others who have contributed to my understanding of the game and allow this video to be possible. Sir Pink, Capra, Hercus, and Silver Edge, thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you've done. Links to their write-ups will be in the description. Sir Pink, however, does not have any write-ups, but he is constantly giving out advice and game understanding live on stream. I strongly advise you check it out. When I start talking in this video about 2v1s or 1v2s, for example, please know that these mean different things. The first number will always refer to your team, and the second number refers to the enemy. For example, I am in a 2v1. That means that I have the advantage. I have two, but the other team has one. In a 1v3, it means the other team has the advantage. Okay. In this video, I will always be green, and the enemy will always be white. Also, one thing to note, nothing about what I say here is absolute. There will always be situations that some of these tactics will not be preferable in, and that is okay. This video is to create a baseline of understanding so that as a community, we are all on the same page. Once we all know what our default action should or could be, actual coordinated group fighting can happen, whether on or off mic, and it's, it's just much more plausible. Updates, new weapons or armor, uh, the, the general meta, these things will change over time. But again, we all need a baseline. So without any further ado, let us begin. The first rule is to always have odds in your favor. The worst odds you ever want to find yourself in is 50%. That means you never want to be in a situation worse than a 1v1. Everything I'm talking about in this video essentially will be to guide you to turn unfavorable odds into a 1v1 or to help keep favorable odds just that in your favor. Any 1v1, there are many courses of actions to take. You can circle clockwise, oops, you can circle clockwise, you can circle anti-clockwise, you could backpedal, you can charge past the enemy in turn, and many other things. For the sake of argument, we will assume that you want to stay and fight, and you think that you can defeat this enemy instead of running or waiting for teammates. Silver Edge has a beautiful write-up on why you want to start by circling clockwise, and again, that link is in the description of this video. But basically, in a perfect world, you want to circle clockwise because when using right-handed weapons, it allows for the shortest distance between that weapon and the enemy. So your swings take physically less time to make contact with your enemy, and a clockwise circling makes that a lot easier. I will not be covering how to handle left-handed weapons, as that is currently not in the game. If that gets added to the game, this will most certainly change. The concepts and principles will be the same, the direction will be different, and I think that will add a lot more variety to the game. I look forward to that. Anyway, there is not much I'll be covering on 1v1s, as it's already been covered by others far greater than I, so let us move on to 2v1s or 1v2s. There are many ways to approach an ongoing fight. The goal will be the same from whichever direction you come from. When approaching an ongoing 1v1, you want to sandwich your opponent. Since we already explained it in a 1v1, you generally want to rotate clockwise. When approaching this situation, you should approach going anti-clockwise. So if you're approaching this, regardless of what your teammate is doing, which oftentimes they're jumping back and forth trying to get an advantage, you still need to assume that they're going to err to the clockwise direction. So you want to go to anti-clockwise to the right. And the goal is to get them in the sandwich and you want to keep them in the sandwich for reasons we'll go to. I, essentially, I call this the wall. You essentially want to pretend to be two walls. No matter where they go, you guys want to follow and keep... doesn't matter where they go. I don't care where they go. You want to keep in between them. There's limited options for what they can do, and all everything that I'm explaining in this video essentially will be based upon this principle of the sandwich. So the enemy has the options to go attack on you. Now if this is you, and you're being attacked, you generally do not want to attack back. So in this situation, let's say this is, this is me and this is you. You're coming to join the fight. 
and I don't know yet you're here, but as soon as you start coming anti-clockwise to my right, I see you, I'm going to switch, especially if I know that you're going to essentially go for the sandwich, I'm going to stop aggressing. I'm at this point, as soon as I see you in my peripherals, I'm backing up, and I'm going into defensive mode, and I'm going to let them aggress on me and attack me. I want to get into their head and make them think, okay, I'm in a 2v, I'm in a 1v2 now, but this guy's defensive, I just need to finish him off really quick. If I'm being aggressive, there's no incentive for him to just not back off and try to run away or switch to the other guy. If I stay defensive, though, a large portion of the time, the enemy's going to want to try to, to finish what they what they started. They're going to feel like they have put in all this work already. Let's just try to get a couple, maybe he's almost dead. So I'm going to back off. I'm going to be blocking. And at this point, I'm just trying to set up a, an attack for my teammate here. I, I will throw in kicks, I will throw in bashes, but I'm not throwing nearly as many attacks unless I just really see a good opening. But for the most part, I'm not doing that because even if there is a good opening, I don't want to hurt my teammate. I want to win with as little damage to my team as possible. So if this guy's aggressing on me, you have free access to get swings on him. In most situations, that's not the case. Most situations, they're not going to stay aggressing. They're going to switch between, they're going to run, so on and so forth. But, so this person has options. He can aggress on, on me. He can go and switch and aggress on you, which leaves me open to the same thing that I just discussed. He can run further into the enemy lines, which is almost very unlikely to happen, or he could try to retreat. If he tries to retreat, well, now he's basically his retreat is going to pull us into each other, which is a good option for him, bad option for us. We don't want this, because now we're next to each other, meaning that if we both are stupid and are throwing attacks that we're going to hit each other. We need to, to our best of our ability, keep this going. So if he starts pulling this way, we start pulling this way, and you start rotating more. And that's how you, you can use that to your advantage if you're, if you're this guy. But our goal is to create this wall. And this sets up not just a preferable situation for, the, for this 2v1, but it's going to set up preferable situations for everything beyond this. So if the next person coming in, the 3v1, they're not going to try and create this. We are not trying to create this. This is bad. That is not good. We, this wall is forever. Okay, these two in this 2v1, so essentially all fights are going to at this point be 2v1s or 1v2s. This other person, even though this is a this is a 3v1 now, the core is this. The core is these two guys and what they're doing. They have to enable this person. So if they're aggressing this person mostly, this person's going to be defensive. And if this person jumping back and forth, swinging at both, who cares? Let them attack you. Just defend him. Just kick him. Um, let this person prepare an overhand attack or a stab, generally not swinging anything side to side because you do not, again, want to hit your teammates and deal damage. That is huge. This is a battle of attrition. If you're hitting your teammates and get the kill, well, yeah, you hit, you got the kill, but how much how much overall damage was done? And overall damage, in the end, is going to be way more important than getting the kill, okay? This isn't a duel. In a duel, the kill obviously makes the most difference, but in a long team fight, like if you do 50 damage to him and 80 damage to him, but you still kill him, well, you, you did more damage than one person generally has. So it's not a net gain, unless this is the very final round. Even if it's the very final round, it's not a net gain health-wise. That is not favorable. That's not what you want. So these two keep the wall. No matter what's going on, they're going to keep this wall going, right? This person's going to repair, kind of sit back, kind of come in and out, but they're basically preparing an overhand and a or an or a stabbing attack, trying to get cheap shots on this guy. If this guy comes way out and offers a free swing, great. But generally, if he starts aggressing you instead, you go into defensive mode. You pull back and let your team come and do the damage. So at that point, you pull back, he's on you. They're going to want to jump to this, or you're going to want to jump to this. Again, you don't want this. And here's why. So I'll jump to the enemy team. If the enemy team was going, and you're doing something silly like this, he's going to be able to do what he wants all day. Yes, he's probably still going to die, but he's probably going to take one of you with him. And for him, that is a win, right? I mean, best case scenario, worst case scenario, I mean, you want to go one for one. Even if you're not getting the kill, if one of their teammates dies, you've you've succeeded. You've gone one for one, and you're a, you're a net moot point for uh, your life, and that's okay. But this guy, if you're here, he has all these outs, okay? He basically can turn this into a 2v1 or, or excuse me, a 1v2 or a 1v3 all, all, all day. So he's going to go after this guy, which basically, even though these guys are trailing, as he comes around, see, he, for a moment, he'll have a 1v1. It's temporary, but he'll have that 1v1. 
Then this guy comes back in, and it's, again, now it's a uh, 1v2 for him. But, and then it's going to keep coming back to that, that 1v3 for him. But by being in this kind of position, we're giving him the option to say, hey, how about taking a 1v1 for a while and uh, putting odds in your favor comparably? We don't want that. You don't want that. You need to keep this wall. These two guys are critical. They have to keep that wall. We have to keep them on this plane as much as it is. And that plane is going to rotate. That's fine. But as long as they're sandwiched between him, this guy always knows he's going to be perpendicular to them. Right? And that's okay. If he aggresses, then that changes. You switch. Right? You want to keep that wall. Whoever's doing it, that's the principle. You want that wall. It forces him to have these two outs that give you an advantage. Or he runs away, which is also okay. It frees you up for other fights. So then when I was saying it was 4v1s, so if another guy comes in, where will he, what does he do? Typically, if you're the fourth guy coming in on this uh, the 3v1, you just leave. Like, find something better to do. Now, there, may, there are situations, obviously, where there is nothing better to do. Most, it's, Very few times will that be the case. But let's say, for whatever reason, this is just your best practice because it's not going to be worth running somewhere else when you have this right in front of your face and you could turn the advantage. Running into this fight is just stupid. Like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat. It's just dumb. Don't do it. Stay back. I like to stagger to the left because, again, the whole clockwise thing we've discussed over and over again already. Because, especially against good players, I mean, if he's a typical player, you're going to go, they're going to finish him. Maybe one of these characters dies, and then you can jump in. Now, now you've jumped in, and you're keeping that 3v1 going. Or, hopefully that doesn't happen, and he's a good player, maybe like Sir Pink or Brother Olrad, and he's going to try to, like, run past you and get by him. Well, great. Now you have an opening. So at this point, he ran over here, and you can then engage, and you can create, and see, look at, now what do you have again? You have that wall already. You have that 3v1, and you have your spare. This is still technically a 4v1, but not all people are actively involved in this fight. It's a rotation, and everyone needs to understand the rotation and their goal. So now at this point, if he's aggressing on me, it's the same thing as if it's a 2v1. I'm going to let him aggress. I'm going to pull him into me. I'm going to back pace, so that way he's not taking advantage of his full forward movement speed so my teammates can catch up and get shots on him, force him to turn on someone else so I can get a shot on him. On him. Right? So if you're sitting back here, what a lot of people do, especially like what I was saying in like these 3v1s, they're just going to rotate, okay? They're essentially going to be doing this kind of like pattern, so to speak. It's not exactly a pattern, but the goal is if he runs over here, see if I'm not here, and he runs over here, I'm backpedaling, and he, he gets the, the turn on me, He's got that 1v1, right? And it pulls everyone in. And this is where all the damage is done. And this is what I do when I'm in a, in a 1v3. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to run forward past him. I don't do a lot of backpedaling when I get to unfavorable odds because in unfavorable odds, backpedaling just gives them the movement advantage. And rarely is that going to work in your favor for more than a couple seconds. So you run forward. So he, 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 he runs forward. He runs past. He turns on this guy. And now he's in a temporary 1v1. This guy comes around and brings it back to a 2v2, and then pff, you run again, and then you make it into a 1v1. And he comes around, he's coming around, and, pff, and you run again, and you're just constantly keeping this rotation of making the odds as best as possible for the situation you're in. So while he's running around trying to make odds better for himself, you sit back out here, he runs over here. Well, he just screwed himself, because now he's forced to either block your attack or attack you before you attack, which hopefully in most situations, he shouldn't get that first strike out. You're the one who doesn't have the tunnel, doesn't have the tunnel vision focus of three people on you. You have one thing to focus on. You should almost always have the first attack on this. You should always be able to anticipate that and attack first, or properly prep your defense to block and then attack. Either way, whatever he does, you have the advantage here. If you don't, that's probably on you. But either way, what it does is it forces him to either attack you, defend your shot, or do something else. If he backs away, they're basically giving you a free shot. Either way, you or your teammate in this situation should always have uh, damage on this guy. Yeah, maybe he, you'll, it'll glitch through with the hit detection or he'll block it with his shield, but he can't block both of you. This creates a beautiful 2v1 that means that he's going to take a hit in almost every situation. And if he doesn't, you're, we're doing it wrong, generally speaking. Again, no, no absolutes. And I mess it up all the time. I'm not a good player. I'm more of a, this is what I do. Theory and strategy on papers what my forte this is not my, actually playing in mechanics i'm slow i'm old 
but that's what you want to do. If there's a, a fifth person coming in, just leave. Just leave. That should never be necessary. If for whatever reason it is, or you think it is, then you jump over here, and you basically are at this point creating a five, the start pattern. If you have the chance to get to the other side, you can do that too. But I think that that generally is just going to cause more fish, more more issues and problems. Not to mention. Typically, if you're coming from this way, that means your team's on this side, and if you go over here, your back is now exposed to oncoming enemies, and you're likely going to die. Not advisable. So, over here. But, but again, you should be staggered even further back. Being staggered further back allows you to position more easily, while also making sure that you're not getting in the way of your teammates. Also, it shows the order of operations. If one person dies, you're not going to be the next one to fill it in, probably. It's going to move like this, right? Um, there are positioning is extremely important here. So generally, don't do that. It's not worth your time. Your time can almost always be better spent somewhere else. If not, sit back. Let your team do their job and fill in if someone gets out of place or if he comes out here. He comes out here, great. Now, look, okay, we already have, you instantly have that 3v1 going on again. And then these guys can rotate, more or less. And th that's, that's it. That's really pretty much all there is to it. And I'll just kind of re recap. And one, if you're coming upon a 1v1, hope that they're going to go clockwise. Assume that they will and come to their right, go anti-clockwise. If I'm this guy, I see you, I'm instinctively going to start uh, backing up and going uh, clockwise. So that way you can get in there. I hope in the future other people start doing this too. And then here, you're just, again, prepare an attack overhead or, or stab. Basically something that works in a straight line. It doesn't have a, a horizontal swing that can add additional chance to hit your teammates. And that's it. Everything is essentially a 2v1 or a 1v2, and your goal, and you should rarely ever be in heavier situations than that based off these practices that I just kind of displayed. I also have some footage that I'll show. I may have already showed that, whatever. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.